Welcome, everyone. I'm Seamus Ross, and I'm here on behalf of the steering committee of, um, that looks after iPress, and my colleague, uh, Andrea Gothels, who's my, the co-chair from the National Library of New Zealand, um, could not join us because of the time scale. It's already 3 o'clock in the morning there, roughly, and uh, to ask her to stay up. She already stayed up to midnight for the steering committee, so it was a bit cruel to ask her to stay up longer. So I'm um, here representing the both of us. Now, what we're going to do in this session is we're going to tell you a little bit about some governance changes that we're hoping to bring about in terms of iPress to engage the community in a much larger way in, the de in determining the future and the running of the conferences. We're going to have a short report. We're going to have a, a presentation from Nancy McGovern, which will be um, a video. Then I'll have an opportunity for you to make comments on the changes in the governance structure. I have the, the documentation that I can bring up. Then we're going to have a brief report back from the Bake Off um, and what uh, occurred there and how it, uh, what we learned and the experiences of various people. Then um, Dries is going to tell, tell us about Ghent in 2024. We're not going to hear about 2023 because that's going to be the exciting big handoff at the very end of the afternoon. And so we're saving that so that William Kilbride and Chris Prom can um, help you transition to next year. And then we're going to have a number of announcements of IPRESS and um, Memorial Awards. And I hope you'll, you'll stay for that. So it's going to be an exciting session. And uh, thank you all for coming. So over the past years, since 2004, IPRESS has been organized by a very small group of past and future hosts of the conference. Um, some of us have been on the committee for more than a decade. It doesn't allow for, for change, for um, getting broader community involvement. So over the past year, Andrea Gothels and Nancy McGovern worked on developing some new ideas about how we might take governance forward. We're going to have a presentation about that. Today, we agreed as a the steering committee of SDG agreed to put the ideas of governance to a vote uh, in, the, in the coming weeks. If we get suggestions today for modifications to that, we will uh, make those changes before we go to a vote. But basically the outcome, and I can explain it further, but I think Nancy will explain it better. Um, basically the outcome will allow much more community involvement in the running and the future of IPRESS. We've had wonderful, successful conferences over the years, and it's obvious that our community is getting bigger. We need greater engagement. So I'm just going to um, go now to that presentation. Um, and Hi, this is Nance McGovern with a brief update from the STG Governance Subcommittee about the pending STG Governance Plan. Let's go over a little background about the development of the proposal. The SDG discussed the key governance characteristics document at our February and March calls. This document is the framework for discussing the, the governance plan itself today, so I'll go into that more in a little while. These discussions led to the formation of a governance subcommittee with SDG members Andrea Gothels and myself. We were charged with drafting a governance proposal for STG. The draft was ready to share in August for review by and feedback from STG members. We've done that and I'll come back to a status at the end. Here's a bit more about the key governance characteristics document. The last time IPRES met in person, 2019, we presented some community survey results that included issues around governance. 
The key governance characteristics document informed the work of the IPRES Action Area 2 governance working group that were part of the broader IPRES working group activity. The document itself, the key governance characteristics document, was informed by rounds of community feedback that was gathered by that working group. In developing the STG governance proposal, we referred to the key governance characteristics document at three different stages. Before the subcommittee was formed to guide the STG discussion, during the proposal development, as a check by the subcommittee that the ideas submitted by the community were being incorporated into the plan we were developing. And after the proposal, as a communication tool to show the relationship between the proposal and the ideas submitted by the community. You'll see that in successive slides. Next, I'd like to talk about what was in scope and out of scope in developing the governance proposal. In scope things included term limits for STG members, overall membership of STG, transparency issues around sharing information from STG to the broader IPES community, roles and responsibilities, including specific to SDG membership and SDG in relation to conference organizers, and about elections, how people roll on and off STG. Out of scope issues included host guidelines, future conferences, hybrid participation, things that would be addressed by STG in relation to future hosts, updating the IPRES website, maintaining the papers repository that, that have the proceedings of IPRES, issues around conference topics, peer review, and conference platforms such as EasyChair and the pricing of those kinds of systems. The sections of the governance document are the purpose of STG versus conference organizers, STG membership categories, STG roles, STG subcommittees, these emerged in discussing and developing the governance document, proposed schedules for STG membership changes, number of STG members, and proposed election schedule for at-large STG members. At the end of this update, we share the link to the proposed STG governance document. As mentioned, we're using the key governance characteristics to highlight the content of the document. Beginning with transparent. All STG members will be identified and described on the main IPRES website. STG agendas and minutes will be shared on the main website. There will be open elections for at-large STG members. There will be a new communications subcommittee who will handle all issues related to sharing information. There will be new responsibility for STG members to engage with the community. And we will review and update governance documents every three years. Characteristic two, accountable. The governance plan introduces term limits for STG members, introduces periodic reviews against the principles approved by IPRES, clarifies roles and responsibilities for STG members, all the categories within, commits to adhering to STG policies, for example, the code of conduct, and commits to reporting requirements. Characteristic three, responsive. This characteristic includes things like engaging with the community through open communication, asking for and responding to feedback on a regular basis, including community volunteers in subcommittees, and inviting the community to nominate uh, candidates for at-large members of STG, engaging with the community to ensure that STG is identifying and addressing digital preservation trends. Characteristic four, representative and diverse. This characteristic includes things like tracking conference trends, issues like attendance, geographic locations, virtual, hybrid versus physical attendance, reviewing post-conference reports to understand where changes might be needed, expanding STG membership to be more representative of the broader IPRES community, and including li liaisons from affiliated organizations. Characteristic five, effective. The SDG governance document includes these kind of examples in addressing this characteristic. Provide feedback on, com on conference planning, working with conference organizers to identify issues that may need to be addressed to ensure the most successful outcome for a conference in a given year, 
sharing and maintaining a repository of the lessons learned from previous conferences. We have a handbook that's updated annually and making sure that that is available and ready for future hosts and people who want to submit a proposal to host a future conference. Providing feedback to conference organizers on proposed changes to submission and, and review process for getting your things submitted to the program committee each year. Providing ongoing hosting of the conference proceedings, including continued public accessibility to the proceedings, maintaining persistent identifiers so there's easy access to the contents of the proceedings. And the sixth characteristic, sustainable. This includes things like implementing a clear path to roll members on and off STG, being open and welcoming to new and early career attendees, maintaining the full set of STG documentation, making sure that it's available to the community, ensuring the maintenance of comprehensive proceedings, and requiring updates to the conference handbook by hosts. All of these things should make IPRES sustainable. Here's a brief summary of the status of the governance document. The SDG Governance Subcommittee developed the governance proposal and shared it with SDG members who provided feedback to improve it. The subcommittee then compiled the feedback, discussed it with STG on September 7th, and incorporated changes in what you'll see as version one. We wanted to be able to share it with the IPRES community during IPRES 2022. You'll see it as the proposed STG governance plan. STG will implement the STG governance plan once approved by STG members following IPRES 2022. STG will com compile community feedback to incorporate in future updates of the governance plan. In conclusion, we are sharing with the IPRES community the STG governance document. The links below include a version without the mapping and a version with the mapping to the key governance characteristics we just walked through. This update is not going to tell you all you want to know about the governance document. Definitely take a look, dive in, and watch for opportunities to get involved, volunteer, provide feedback to STG. Make sure that you're involved in the future of IPRES. Thanks for listening, and now there'll be an opportunity for a Q&A, I believe. So thank you very much, Nancy. And I'd be grateful if we could give Nancy a round of applause. And, and <laughs> so you can follow these links to the, to the governance documents. I can, I can bring them up. It's very short notice to suggest that you should read these now. But um, please take some time to have a look at them. Send, send us comments. And if you have suggestions, um, the governance subcommittee will look at those and, and take them into account in future revisions. We really are pushing ahead, even though we know this is not a perfect document, because we want to bring these changes into action as soon as possible to offer the community greater engagement um, with, the, with the conference going forward. So I think it, it offers a, a lot of opportunities. I'm happy to take um, some Q&A about the, the governance now. Um, so uh, please, if anyone has questions. Okay. So we're assuming that it's, uh, you know, we've had some conversations with uh, various members of the STG. We're fairly confident that it will pass the vote in the next two weeks. The current members of the STG will all roll off on the 1st of January. So this is my, probably my last time in any significant position standing in front of IPRESS, I'm pleased to say, um, because I really want to see other people involved. <coughs> Um, there will be elections from the new members will roll on um, from the 1st of January and there will be elections for new co-chairs in the first couple of weeks of January. That will then result in a elections committee being established 
and they will reach out to the community at large using the iPress interest group um, listserv initially to seek nominations for the members at large, and they will be elected probably in March or April if we can meet if we can get the time scale going. Please. Hi, Seamus. Thanks. Um, so I was a little bit involved in the uh, future Vipress interest you were. subgroup <laughs> thingy. Um, and I know that we talked a little bit about the possibilities of having subcommittees that cover the different strands of IPRESS, like innovation, like environment. And their task will be to monitor the progress that we make as a community across um, different instances and years of IPRESS, and also to ensure that both re research and practice will be adequately represented. Could you give a little bit of feedback or talk a little bit about the status quo of that? No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was, that was not meant to be a cheeky response. The answer is we focused on governance at the strategic level of the um, conference organization, the building of community. We haven't actually looked at the strategic issues associated with uh, what we might call technology watch observer, uh, pre preservation and curation observatory, which we absolutely as a community would be well positioned to do and we should take that forward. But I think that we had, it was so complex getting, coming to agreement, it was a huge amount of work, building on the excellent work that had been done in the, the working groups before to get to this stage that I think that's something that can take forward in the, in the next year. But it's actually a very, very good, good point because that way we can build community value for, uh, on a consistent basis for um, the members and the participants in IPRESS, not just make it a single conference idea. Uh, thank you for reminding me about that. And I think that Nance is listening. Unfortunately, uh, um, there's a, did we have any comments in Slido, by the way? Someone could check. None. Okay. Um. Okay, so currently there are about 17, 15 to 17 members of IPRESS. Um, and the actual numbers of the, 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 mem the number of membership will um, be relatively close to the same because it'll be the five years previous conferences plus the um, three up to four years future conferences plus five members. So there'll be about 14 members of, uh, of, the, committee at, of the committee itself. Please, go ahead. I, I got the mic. Barbara. <laughs> um, I have uh, two questions. Um, if I understand you right, you said the current STG members will um, step down in January and there will be an election for new members. But I see a lot of slides about what's expected uh, from the new members but there is no idea how much time is involved with this activity. And I think if people are applying to become a new member, there should be an idea of how much time is involved with this activity. Otherwise, perhaps nobody dares to <laughs> be elected. <laughs> Do you have an idea? <laughs> okay, so, so this... I just want to make one correction to what I said about the number of members of the IPRESS steering committee. And initially, there will only be nine members from January because there'll be the five past conferences plus the four future conferences. From, the, um, from March, it will be 14 members because there'll be the five new um, members from the community at large. How much work is involved? It really will depend upon what the STG steering committee plans to do in the future. The current STG steering committee has been predominantly involved in the process of 
choosing the future hosts of the conference and monitoring the progress each year of the local organizing committee. Most organizing committees, uh, local organizing committees, have done an exceptional job. And some, this year, have done an absolutely outstanding job. Um, so there's been very minimal involvement with, from the steering committee. One persistent issue, to be really frank, uh, has always been the tension between practitioner papers and what we might call scientific original innovation and research papers. And trying to find that balance has been um, challenging at times. And sometimes, some, um, f some of us from the research community have felt that maybe we've gone a little too far towards the practitioner side, and there hasn't been enough emphasis on um, innovative research. But I've heard the counter story from the practitioners. So it's a delicate balancing act, and it's uh, a bit akin to the uh, actor in Shakespeare in Love who's asked in the pub, well, what's the play about? The play's about a nurse. Well, what's your role in the play? I'm a nurse. So the, the point is, the problem is, this tension often represents what community we come from. And that's an exciting thing about iPress, that it does represent two very different communities that are working towards one goal, understanding, improving, and be delivering better and better services for digital curation and digital preservation. So the elections committee within iPress, it, it'll only take a little bit of work every year. Um, the communications committee in, in the iPress governance, that may take a little bit more time. The committee that chooses the um, future hosts, which was exceptionally well chaired this uh, past year by Marcel, um, and they did a, and Barbara over here, they did an outstanding job leading the group to, to deliver the, to, to select the hosts in, um, of, of Ghent, Copenhagen, and Wellington for the future sessions of, uh, of, I, of I Press. Are there any other questions? Please, give mic all the way up to the top. It's a bit of a sprint. Um, forgive, forgive me not knowing the answer to this question myself, but um, I've reached the conclusion if I don't know it, then others might not either. Um, what is the def definition of the electorate um, who are going to do the electing of the members? And what is the definition of the cohort from which the members can be drawn? That's a very good question. And we're going to draw the cohort from those individuals who subscribe to the iPress interest group um, listserv. There are 900 members of the iPress uh, interest group listserv as of this morning, according to Nance. And um, so if you are not a member of that, uh, William will be reminding you uh, when he sends out uh, an opportunity for feedback on what I know we're all going to be saying was just an extraordinary conference. Um, I'll get my check later, William. Um, <laughs> so, um, so if you're not registered in the iPress interest group, you'll have an opportunity to do that. Okay. And it will be run just the way we, we're running elections for the future co-chairs. There'll be a nomination period when people from the community can nominate others. There'll be a, a period when those who've been nominated can produce a brief statement to post to say, you know, what they're going to bring to the steering committee and, and why, why their past experience makes them uh, a good person to vote for. Then there'll be a, a, a period of, of voting. Now, exactly how that voting will work, whether it's going to be first past the post or whether it will um, have a multi-stage voting, that's something for the elections committee to decide and really will depend upon 
um, how many nominations they think they're going to get. If they're going to get 50 nominations for, for the, to be on the steering committee, then first past the post is not necessarily an equitable way to deliver, um, to select someone. Uh, and they'll probably have to think about something more layered. But um, we'll have to allow the future election committee to have some flexibility because we don't know how it's going to, to play out. Um, so th we could spend longer time trying to do an implementation of this change of governance. But I'm, I'm afraid that uh, some of us uh, feel that that uh, is not going to be in our best interest. There's nothing we're going to put in place is going to be perfect. Okay. I just want to see, we have a couple more questions here. I think I addressed the question of at-large members. Um, okay, that's... Absolutely, old members will be eligible to uh, apply to be a candidate if they want. I would think that old members would, um, like, will, well, I'd advise my colleagues, old members, not to do that because I think we really reached the point where we really need some change and uh, we need some new and original ideas. Um, but that's up to, up to them. So there was a question about, for the, for the committees, is there a preferred breakdown of how many STG members and how many non-STG STG members? For the committees of, of, of IPRESS, the only members will be STG members. For the, govern, for, the, um, for the governance committee, the overarching STG, the elections committee, the communications committee, and the selection committee. Um, there won't be members beyond the members of the STG. So as I said, the members of the STG will include um, the five past and three or four future conference uh, chairs and the, four, the five elected at-large members. And they will join the, the, the committee in, in March. So does that... Um, Lead to any further questions? Go ahead, Adam, please. Clarifying that um, uh, at-large members are elected for one five-year term and may not run for a second five-year term. Yes. That, I believe that's correct. I believe that's correct. Uh, yeah, Farquhar, I just wanted to check um, that, that I understood that at-large members are uh, elected for a single five-year term and may not run for a second five-year term after that. I, I'm pretty certain that that's correct. But it doesn't mean that they will not end up on a future STG if, for example, they, they were to chair a conference, an iteration of IPRESS. But this allows for continuing evolution of the conference and continuing change of membership. Is that acceptable? Okay. Um, I'm pleased now to introduce the chair of IPRESS uh, 2023. 2024, sorry, 2024. Uh, William's going to get to introduce the chair of IPRESS 2023. Dries, here you go, Dries. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. We haven't done anything yet. <laughs> um, thank you. So uh, great to be here. Uh, one of our slogans of our bid was that the digital preservation is everywhere. Um, it's a challenge for all of us in whatever field or subfield you're working. And what we've seen is that we all are adapting our practice and adapting to the digital change, going always faster. And 
holding on to some of it is, is quite a challenge. And what we've been doing, doing a lot and what this conference is about a lot is learning from colleagues standing on shoulders. And that is why we're so uh, happy and so thankful to be able to organize the conference in Ghent, in Flanders, um, because we really need to um, do even more uh, sharing uh, of, of knowledge, of, of know-how in a practical sense, but also thinking forward in an academic sense uh, always is quite important. IPRES is one of those uh, tremendous um, uh, conferences where practice and, and academic pursuit meet, and that is quite, quite valuable. Um, Ghent, Flanders, we're at uh, like one of those historic crossroads. Um, we have a big support from our government to make this happen. And the reason why we really look forward to this is that IPRES is such a unique forum, um, a place to meet and to exchange ideas and to validate what you're doing as a practitioner with what is actually what your colleagues are doing and what is actually um, best practice. Um, to make this happen, we, we built a small consortium. Uh, it's not one local organizer. Um, I'm at, he at Ghent University Library, um, but I'm joined with uh, VRT, which is our uh, local public broadcaster, and then two um, digital archival institutions, MIMO and Digital Archives of Flanders. And MIMO is specializing in uh, digitization of endangered um, formats and, and carriers, uh, doing a lot of work in AV and, and um, image uh, conservation. Digital Archives Flanders is much more involved in government documents and how these can uh, really brought, be brought to the, to the future. So it's, uh, our consortium is already a little bit of a story about where digital preservation is and where we can find it and who is actually making it happen. It's everywhere. And so it's not just our little group of four. Already we're talking with uh, over 20 organizations in our uh, area who are doing this kind of work uh, in arts and culture, in media, and universities and research institutes, and at government, uh, different government levels, bringing people together from this um, idea that we're maybe not visible enough in this uh, community. We may be working on our own and maybe not sharing enough with the community. And we really want to boost that, that exchange. So what, what better to do than, than host you all in, in Ghent? We have some great venues, um, um, a magnificent um, medieval hospital renovated uh, as a concert hall, one of the earliest hospital buildings in Europe will be your, uh, the main venue. But um, we also have very much this uh, need of a, a hybrid experience to uh, in, in, in invite and accommodate as many uh, participants and as many modes of participation as we can. So the main conference will be hosted in the city. We're thinking about and we're learning a lot from what's happening here in adding online only events and, and adding a, a hybrid experience uh, to include as many uh, people as possible. But we're also thinking about satellite events and maybe even um, some site visits and specialized visits in other cities. So it will, it will be quite a packed week. Um, our goals are really to connect what we're doing in, in practice locally with you, with the global community. I really want to engage with you as much as we can to build a great program, um, both on an academic level and, and as a, um, a very practical showcase of what, what directions are being explored. Um, so please, if you have ideas, if you have noticed things here, have ideas that maybe are too soon to get done by next year, because of course the next meeting is 23, but some things can't be done in a year, some things do need, need some time. So if you're working on ideas that you maybe want to show results later, think of us. Um, and of course, IPRES does not stop in Ghent. There's conferences after that as well, so there's, there's a lot to share. So please get in touch with us if you have ideas, concerns, things you want to share, things you've seen and that you might, might feel are important for us to take uh, along. We've been watching what's happening on Twitter. We've been reading what people are saying. So we're, we're, we're hearing and we wear this little badge. So if you feel like talking to us, it's a, quite a group here. So please share your thoughts and uh, especially join us in Ghent in 24.
Thank you. Questions? Does anyone have any questions for Dries? One more call. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks very much, Dries. Um, I believe now we're going to have a presentation about the Bake Off. Is someone here to do that? Oh, terrific. You were here all the time. I didn't realize. <laughs> Thank you. So we don't really have a presentation on the Bake Off. But um, hello, everyone. I am Leontine, and I'm one of the head chefs. Yes, we did take the baking paradigm a bit far yesterday, but it was fun. Um, just for everyone here who doesn't know what the Bake Off is, it's um, an opportunity for people to present tools, but um, it's not only focused on the bigger vendors. There was also room for people with smaller tools or even people who demonstrated other people's tools. Um, it was all recorded, so you can watch it back. Um, highly recommend. Um, <laughs> um, there were no winners, just to point that out. Uh, everyone was a star baker and got a spoon, um, so that was lovely. Um, if there's any feedback, or if you like the format of the Bake Off, please let iPress 2023 know, because um, yes, it's, it's really fun to do. Um, and the last thing that we wanted to say was that we've got a data set, which we call the pantry. Um, and it's got like a whole lot of different formats and we got like a whole lot of people to contribute to it. So it's got some really interesting things in there. Um, so yeah, feel free to use any of the tools that were demoed yesterday and use that data set um, however you like. If there's anything that you want to contribute to that data set, also feel free to contact us. So yes, thank you. Can I just ask a question? You can say that all of them were excellent, but were there any particular highlights? Ooh, am I allowed to say that as a head chef? Am I, I don't know. Yeah, you, yeah. Jenny gives me a hmm, so we will go with okay. it. Um, yeah, Lip Nova was really cool because they had like their, um, uh, they showed off their emulation tool. Very impressive to do that during a live demo. Um, very impressive from everyone actually to do that during a live demo. Um, we've had a, the first session was very um, cool as well because there were a lot of people. You could really see that it was a community that like talks to each other um, and uses each other's tools. So it was kind of a continuation of each other. So it was like it started with Siegfried and then we went on to uh, demystify light, which then uses Siegfried. So it was great. It was really good. So yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. No thank problem. you. Are there thank any other questions? Oh, yeah. One in the back. Let me check Slido. <laughs> um, your pantry. Uh, it occurs to me that it is an. It, it it could expand its scope to become some sort of canonical test collection um, for the use of. Uh, this community is that something that, that the Bake Off team, if I can refer to you in that way, have considered? Um, so I just had a really, really quick chat with Mickey a minute ago, um, also about the sustainability of the data set because it currently lives on Mickey's Google Drive. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but that is something that we could consider maybe doing because um, there it would be a waste because we spent quite a bit of time putting that all together and. There are some really interesting things there. Uh, so, yeah. Anything else? Oh, we've got another question. <laughs> so, I think if I may, I think Tim asks a good question. And also, if I may, in relation to the Bake Off, it's not just about the access to the data, it's the access to the Bake Off being in some way reproducible next year. Eh? So how about we sit and think in conversation at least between 
us and friends from Urbana Champagne that we find a way to make that same data set available so that when you all come to Urbana Champagne and you all want to do the Bake Off again, it's the same data set and hopefully that will give some sense a bit of reproducibility. So let's work on that. That's a very good observation, Tim. I'm happy to put some time to make that happen. If I could make one other comment, though, while I have the microphone, which is my first time, I wanted to... <laughs> I wanted to make an observation, if I may. I hope I'm not going to speak out of turn here. It did occur to me, and I, don't, I did not attend the Bake Off much, except for the obvious cake reasons. But the, as I understand, there was only one presentation by a female developer. Yes, yes. yes. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Can we do better than that? Yes. Okay, yes. said it out loud. Thank you. Oh, and thanks to all the bakers as well. I should say that too. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now we're going to move on to the recognition of the best paper. And um, please. Where's the clicky thing? <laughs> oh. <laughs> right, so first up is uh, the best paper prize sponsored by Nestor. Let's see, I think I have to go one further, right. And um, I'm happy to present this today in two different roles, um, mainly as the, one of the paper co-chairs, but also as a community member of Nestor who kindly sponsors the prize for best paper this year. We really had a very good spread of excellent papers across all different strands, which is showcased by the fact that the two commendations and the winner come from three different strands. And um, I'm going to start out with the two commendations without much further ado. The first one is These Crawls Can Talk, Context Information for Web Collections by Susanne van den Eichel and Daniel Steinmeier. So I would like to invite you all for a round of applause for that runner up. The other runner-up to the best paper prize is Going for Gold or Good Enough, observations on three years of benchmarking with DPC RAM observations, uh, observations on three years of benchmarking with DPC RAM, sorry, it's been a long day, <laughs> by Jenny Mitchum and Paul Wheatley. Also a round of applause for those. And now for the winner, drum roll. I'm going to give you our reasoning for choosing this paper first. The topic of the paper couldn't have been more timely. Building on previous models put forth in the field, the authors convinced the jury with a thorough methodology and a strong practical implementation of measuring CO2 costs at their institution. Exploring changes in documentation and practice, the authors conclude with a strong set of recommendations for their own institution, but also for the wider community, fostering a more environmentally sustainable digital platform. And if you haven't guessed already, the winner is Green Goes With Anything, Decreasing Environmental Impact of Digital Libraries at Virginia Tech by Alex Kinneman and Alan Munchauer. Now, I know that Alex is not here. Um, she already kindly attended the session remotely. I think Alan isn't here either right now. If he is, he may come down. If not, we will absolutely make sure that he will, of course, get the prize, the lovely trophy, and everything that comes with it. Thank you. Hello, my name is Angela Pugioni. I'm with the DPC, and I'm very pleased to present the best poster prize at iPress today on behalf of the Digital Repository of Ireland. Uh, unfortunately, they could not be here right now, but um, I'm going to do my best to take their place. Um, tell you a little bit more about the 
and the best poster prize. So in order to recognize posters that stand out for their quality, IPRES each year awards a prize to the authors of the best poster with commendations for two more. So the top three posters are selected following a procedure based on review scores and scores assigned by the best poster prize jury using a, a complex sex, a set of criteria. Does the work significantly uh, advance knowledge in digital preservation? Does the work adequately build on or contextualize previous work? Is there sufficient evidence for claims presented by the authors? So there's two commendations. The first commendation is, um, let me see, Paloma Benaito Arias with her, best post, with her poster Leveraging AI for Video Appraisal, a case study uh, of the World Bank Group. The second commendation would be Digital Preservation in the Lunchbox, launching a community of practice by Emily Fortin. Big round of applause for her. And it gives me great, great pleasure to announce the winner of the Best Poster Award of uh, IPRESS 2022 for, from Roll, the CO2 emissions of storage and use of digital objects and data by Tamara Fonsoul. And I've seen you in the audience. Please come down. My name is Ellie O'Leary, I work for the DPC and I hope everyone can hear me as I lost my voice during the Cayley last night. <laughs> <laughs> so, as a newcomer to the DPC IPRES and digital preservation in general, I'm delighted to be joining you today to present the IPRES 2022 Best First Time Contribution Prize. This is the third time that the prize has been presented and the D DPC is proud to return as the award sponsor. The winner of this prize will receive support to attend a future IPRES conference of their choosing in the next three years. This prize aims to recognise the important contributions that new attendees make to the IPRES conference. The scope of contributions eligible for this award is purposely set broadly. Any contribution will be considered, whether a paper or poster, a presentation at the ad hoc programme, a panel or a contribution to the games room. This also includes contributions that respond to the conference programme, such as tweets, comments or killer questions from the floor during the conference. This year we have two commendations as well as our winner and um, unlike the others I'll also give a bit of information about why we've given the, these commendations. So the first commendation is to Anna Ladensuva for the lightning talk on responding to obsolescence in flash-based net art, a case study on migrating Sinekin's genesis. Anna's talk on their work about responding to obsolescence in flash-based net art was a clear and concise discussion of the challenges, responses and solutions. Anna's discussion on what constitutes the authentic work was thought-provoking and flagged that the original code may not be the most critical aspect for preservation. Their consultation with the artists to determine this demonstrates that there is no single solution for net-based art. The second commendation is for Tegan Zoldowski for their lightning talk on high-speed high 2 case study regarding their work with the Archaeology Data Service and HS2 project. <laughs> Tegan delivered a lively and engaging presentation with a clear explanation of the challenge faced with the conclusion that data is only as good as the accompanying metadata. Kudos also for presenting without the support of any slides. And so without further ado, the winner of the best first time contribution prize is Eliza Rodenberg for the game, The Data Horror and Open Science Escape Rooms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'll just, I'll give you some more compliments as well. So. <laughs> As a first-time attendee to IPRES, Eliza created an engaging and thoughtful game that raised awareness of good research data group management and fair principles. 
The game resulted in a lively discussion with participation from all groups, and it was interesting to learn during the session how the game was built and used with researchers as well to convey concepts. We hear Eliza is developing another game on research management software, which would be a welcome addition to any other IFRES. So from one first time attendee to another, congratulations. <laughs> Please invite Adam Farquhar to the stage. You can just use this one to go to the next slide. Great, thanks. Let's try that. Okay, so um, uh, many of you. Uh, and many members of the digital preservation community at large will have known Angela Dappert. Uh, she was passionately committed uh, to this field and contributed very actively at organizations including the British Library, the Digital Preservation Coalition, and Springer Nature. In international projects like Planetscape or eARC, in community service including the Premise Editorial Committee and uh, for many years the IPRES uh, Steering Committee. She led on producing the essential book on premise, uh, published by Springer, and she also earned one of the few PhDs for research in digital preservation. Many of you will also know uh, or be aware of Angel's illness leading to her death in July of 2021. She was my wife for nearly 34 years, uh, as well as a colleague for much of our um, time together. In the months before death, Angela and I spoke about ways that she could recognize her passion for innovative work in digital preservation in an ongoing way. We identified the possibility of a memorial award in her name, and the IPRES steering committee was enthusiastic about the idea, and uh, we put it into place as an ongoing part of the conference. Uh, this will be the second year that we've made this award and uh, Mickey Lindlar and her colleagues uh, last year uh, won it uh, the first time in 2021. So uh, the award recognizes work in digital preservation that has both strong theoretical underpinnings and potential for clear impact on practice. The selection process is integrated with the IPRES reviewing process. Uh, the program committee identifies a short list of high quality candidates that meet the award criteria, and then the winner is selected um, from that short list. Um, I was very pleased with the quality of the short list uh, this year. Uh, Angela would also have been pleased to see them. The short listed papers are listed here. Uh, Alice Kinnaman, Green Goes With Anything, Decreasing Environmental Impact of Digital Libraries at Virginia Tech. Karen Hansen's Preservation Strategies for New Forms of Digital Scholarship, and Andrew Jackson's design patterns in digital preservation. Uh, in addition to public recognition uh, the, of the work, paper, and authors, the award also attracts a small prize of 500 pounds. So it's time to announce the 2022 recipient of the Angela Dappert Memorial Award for Digital Preservation. And this year, um, The award goes to Andy Jackson for his design patterns in digital preservation, understanding information flows. And I particularly like three aspects of this work that were very much consistent with Angela's values. First, it examines an established theoretical framework in the light of uh, established practice. It looks in the relationships in OIS between or among the SIP, AIP, and DIP, submission, archival, and dissemination packages in the light of existing preservation systems and past projects. Second, uh, it makes some insightful observations about these relationships and links them to the risks that they introduce as well as the steps that one might take to mitigate them. Finally, it's clearly and simply written 
and frames the work in a way that should be helpful, especially to new members of the community. So I know that Angela will be very uh, pleased by the outcome this year. Uh, my congratulations to Andy. Unfortunately, um, Andy was one, unaware of, of uh, this honor and um, uh, had to go back to Yorkshire uh, yesterday evening. Um, and on this behalf, I believe Peter May, uh, one of his colleagues from the British Library, uh, uh, will be uh, glad to accept the word on his behalf and transport it back to Yorkshire um, so that Andy uh, receives and knows the recognition that he's received. So, uh, Okay, congratulations to all the winners of the awards. Good luck to uh, Dries in bringing together his community to make Ghent 2024 a reality. Please remember to congratulate and look at if you didn't see the videos from the Bake Off and if you can contribute to the pantry, um, please do. And also, do take a look at the governance documents. If you have any comments, you can write to Nance McGovern, to myself, or to Andrea Gothels, and we will um, take your suggestions into account in final revision. And please, watch out for the announcement on the iPress interest group for nominations for STG members. And then, because you are the electorate, vote only once. <laughs> OK, so um, we're done a little bit early, but I'm not going to tie you to your chairs. I'm going to um, ask you to go out and enjoy some more conversation. And thank you very much for attending today. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>